so I'm getting started here on raising the bed floor of the square body to accommodate the larger C notch and four link setup I'll be going with and also to tuck my fuel tank up under there instead of have it hanging down low. Couldn't really find any great videos on YouTube. I did find a couple that kind of helped me get started. But So we've pulled the wheel tubs, obviously. My truck was already ready to block and paint and it kind of sucks, but to get my bed sides off, I have to cut both sides of my roll pan. Go ahead and cut the roll pan, bust the sides loose, and that'll allow us to get some nice clean measurements to get started correctly. I looked at this for a long time trying to figure out a shortcut and there may be a shortcut, but there were some potential hangups at the end that I thought might just totally screw the whole thing up. So I don't really see a shortcut. We're gonna bust it apart and that will allow me to lay everything flat, get nice, you know, for sure straight lines. This is gonna be a lot of work and I'm dreading it, but it's kept me awake at night. It's time to just do it and move on. So here we go. There always has to be one of these, don't there? Nice pan. Go ahead and pop our front bed pan loose. wearing this bedside for a hat in just a second. There's gonna be two spot welds here from the factory, but they welded a bead all the way across that backside. So that'll be a good time. People like to talk about what kind of tools they got. I've seen the Viper shop stools, the roll around kind of like 400 bucks. Well, this is the outrageous beach chair from Sam's Club. Works pretty good. Like it a lot. Step one. Done. Just taking a minute here to label some of this hardware. I know we all think we would remember exactly what bolt goes where. Uh, I never do. So label these real quick, get started cutting this bed down. It will save you time in the end, I promise. You will just bag your hardware. All right. Okay, we're gonna start with the easy piece first. We laid out some tape, decided where we wanted to remove our section and decided on this because we'll lose this bolt hole, but we'll still have good spacing on what's left. Then I just took the big fat Sharpie and, and traced my tape in case it moves while you're cutting. Still have a guideline to go by. And marked on which side of my tape I'm gonna cut on so I don't lose my focus and cut it wrong. Okay, Ryder got it welded all the way across. Got it semi-ground back down and that's good for now. Got nice penetration all the way through onto a bedside. Okay, we're starting in on the first bedside. And if I'm being honest, I've already really started second guessing this big idea I had. But what I've got, I've taken the time to mark out lots of measurements 
and reference points before we ever cut anything. My plan is to make this bottom cut and then obviously we've got to cut the bed panel loose. So we'll cut in this flat area here. What I would like to do as opposed to go ahead and laying out two separate lines, I want to cut this bottom loose, slide it up, and then I will actually tack weld this into position up here and then cut it again. That way, my second cut will be a more closer duplicate of the actual weld seam. You can't see a really good clear way to mark out two lines and, and ever have them match up. The troubling area to me is gonna be this, this back pillar. We can't just simply cut this section out and slide it up per se. We have to leave the tailgate holes so we'll have to cut up and slide it up. But what I'll go ahead and do now is start opening this first cut up and see if I can get this all loose. Another area is right here. It's got a fender well of sorts that's welded into place and it's tapered and curved. It's a very complex shape. So it's not quite as simple as cutting seven inches out of this and hoping that once we move it all up that way, that we'll be able to work this back together. Super simple. Um, I'll go ahead and lay that out, but I think what I'm gonna do is cut it in this flat area here. And obviously I'll have to make a filler piece for that. That is gonna be easier to me than cutting these spot welds loose and taking this whole panel up and then trying to build something that fits all of this. So yeah, this is, uh, this is not for the faint of heart, but here it goes. Okay, the first plan won't work. We would never be able to break this pillar loose. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to cut the spot welds and free up this inner bed panel and work these two pieces separately. So what we'll do here, we'll cut these spot welds out and then we'll start working on the bed panel first and move this up accordingly, whatever that means. got about an inch of play between the the higher location of the bedside and the fender well rear wheel tub so I'm going to take three quarters of an inch out and we'll get rid of that bottom piece there uh, it's interfering now with the outside of the bedside so we got to remove that then we'll lay it back in there and start planning our next move now the interior of my bed has these rectangular raised panels all along the top I assumed that they all did but I have noticed some that don't but what I'm gonna to try to do is we've actually got a little bit of a lip built into this existing uh, well or, or whatever you wanna call it. But I'm gonna to try to trim my well to where I can utilize that lip to mate with this rectangle across there and maybe give it a nice finished look. So we're not done yet. We went ahead and got all the excess removed so we can lay this bottom section in here nice and tight. And as opposed to spot weld, I just took some sheet metal screws and I screwed this down good and tight. Now I'll come back with the cutoff wheel and the grinder and make some straighter cuts and this will be ready to start tacking into place. So. Time to go ahead and take these welds down. Perfect tool for this is a die grinder with the Cubitron. If you're not using the Cubitron stuff, guys, it's good stuff. It is not cheap, but these last a long time. They do a great job. Well, 
Well, this worked out okay. I was able to, for the most part, maintain that line, which you won't even really be able to see it once we get the bed assembled, the, the fender well on there. But the tighter you try to keep your work, the better it all comes out, I think, in the end. So paying attention to the details that, that might not matter yet, I feel like in the end, sometimes it pays off. What I'll do here is just take a hammer and a dolly real quick and go along my weld seams where I can kind of relieve that as you weld that it wants to pull it together and just need to relax it a little if you can. That first bedside is, is good for now. There were some pinholes in some of the welds that we'll, I will go back and, and clean up the welds. So don't freak out if you saw some stuff in the welding that didn't look like it was quite done. It's not. But right now we're gonna go ahead and start. This is the driver's side panel and I've got it marked out. And like I said earlier, now we at least have a road map. So I've got my initial cut line laid out. I've got measurements uh, on just about everything you can think of to measure. Um, you can't see it, but I've got the three quarter inch tape line on the bottom of this fender well so we can go ahead, remove that. And we'll do that while it's still attached this time instead of wrestling it around once I got it off. It, it was kind of like holding a wet noodle and trying to cut it. Cut all that first. And uh, a lot of times it seems like the second time you do something, you can do it a little bit cleaner and a little bit better. And that's what I'm hoping for. First side worked out fine. But we'll see if we can do this a little bit cleaner this time. Go from there. Most I just wanted to try that uh, air hammer. See if it, see how it did cutting this stuff. It did pretty good. I don't know. It's kind of violent. Okay, we'll be looking for 14 and a quarter from the bottom of our bedside. On the money. Screwed her in. 21. So we'll be looking for 14 down here. And I thought on the first side that it was weird that they were that they were a quarter of an inch difference. But the second bedside was exactly the same. So apparently there's a quarter of an inch difference from the front to the back. Now our height can't change. While I'm thinking about it, I'll show you guys what I meant and why I cut this piece. You see, as your bedside comes, as you move up your bedside, the outside begins to encroach. And this piece is too tall, too thick. And that's why I had to trim the bottom of the lip off. So starting on this back pillar, we've got our spot welds drilled out. We're going to take off, slice up through here. Then across, we know we were 18 and an eighth from here to there before we started. So we're, we're gonna cut at 11 and an eighth across and down to free that up. 
And I'm gonna take a little more time on this one and see if we can do something a little cleaner with, with this. First, I just need to get that out of the way so we can see maybe a better way to go about it. Now, I will say, if you were starting on a bedside, what complicates this for me? This all comes apart. You can totally disassemble the inside of your lens housing, your post, your bedside. You can drill it all apart and, and take that apart, and that would ultimately be the best if you were starting from zero, but I'm, I'm not at zero, I'm like 7.4, because I wasn't gonna do this initially. So I had already filled my bed, my stake pockets in, those are welded tight. So when you change directions in the middle of your project, sometimes you make work where there wasn't any. And I am an expert at that. Yes, it would be better to take this all apart, but this is how I'm gonna do it because of where I'm at in my project. You might be watching this thing and you know, this guy is a dummy. Fair, fair enough. But that's why I'm doing it this way. Oh, another one of my favorite tools. I bet I bought this when I was probably 17 or 18. I'm 45 now. It would have been from Harbor Freight, but that would have been before there was a Harbor Freight you know, in every city. So you had the little paper books you had to order order stuff out of and you didn't really know what you were getting. But this was probably like $11, I wanna say. And I still have a pack of the blades over there in my toolbox. This thing, like I say, is probably well over 20 years old and it still works. Now here's what the inside of this looks like. Just kind of trying to figure what would be the what would be the easiest way to do this. All we really need to do is move the ear up that that uh, bolts into the, the bed floor support. So took some measurements. I'm gonna move this up, come back through, stick our new ear on, and then probably go ahead and, and cut this trash out of the way. We don't need it, it's unsightly. Again. That's how to easily make quick work of a gap that was a little more than what you wanted. And you hold your copper paddle up there and nothing to it. Like I was saying earlier, oftentimes you get better at something if you've already done it once. One thing that I didn't do on the first bedside that I really regret, two things I guess, but first thing there's a time and a place for a plasma cutter. They're a fantastic tool. That first bedside I cut out with my plasma cutter and that was the worst idea I had during this whole project. What it did was blistered my primer on the outside of my bed that was ready for me to block and paint. Cost myself probably three days worth of work with that plasma cutter. And uh, so this time around, no plasma cutter, cut off wheel. We did use the air chisel a little bit, that's fine. And we we'll get ready to weld this back. I've just taken my welding blanket and push it up under there. It was just something that I didn't think about among all the other things I was trying to think about. But your bedside's extremely close. Your outside is really close to this. So try to keep the heat off that as much as possible. And that kind of goes back to, you know, if you were starting from scratch and you hadn't done all that yet, you still wouldn't want to get that much heat on it. Just, it, it could warp it. But anyways, that's what we're doing here. tacked in now, used some TIG rod to, to build a, a lip there, got to grind that back out and make it match. That's going to work okay. Better or worse, we got her tacked in. Time to get at it with that Cubitron again, knock these down, see what's there, touch it up if we need to. After coming back through with the Cubitron and the flap wheel, I missed a few spots, but I've got them touched up. And for right now, that's gonna work just fine. So what I wanna do now is test fit these panels and see, see if it's gonna go back together. Continue with the bedsides and trying to 
figure out how to how to go about refashioning this inner well. Originally, I said I wanted to leave this piece alone. The further I've looked at it, the spot welds on the on the bottom here, some of them have already given up and actually cracked. And that stinks. So I said I didn't want to mess with this, but I don't really see a, a good way around it. I'm going to pop this loose. I'm not sure if I can utilize the radius and the curvature of what's there. When you look at something simple like this, you think, yeah, just go over there and stick it in your, in your bead roller. Well, just to make a piece like this, it's quite a bit of work. It's not quite as easy as it looks on TV. So if we can use this piece, use that curve right here, and you know what's here, that might be the easiest. And really, I'm kind of trying to use what's here. And the whole purpose of making this video is to show some of you what all's involved in this. And if we take off building custom pieces, you know, that's probably not gonna help a lot of you. So something as simple as this right here, if we can use it, will save a ton of work, maybe. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of there. Know a whole lot more about it here in just a minute. And these projects, it seems like all of them, all of my projects, you think, oh, that'd be easy. It might be if you were willing to just scab stuff everywhere and do, you know, crummy work. I, that just drives me nuts. So I want it to be clean and good when I'm done. What that looks like right now, that's anybody's guess. So on with the head scratching, but well, here's where my work starts to get sketchy. Went ahead and cut out these panels. I did decide to go ahead and use these. I've repaired these, straightened them up, welded all the holes closed, and cleaned them back up. Now, got a piece of 14 gauge, and I've took and, and transferred my marks over onto my 14 gauge. And we need to put a bend in this right about here to clear the curve of the upper bed. So this is gonna seem kind of redneck, but when you're trying to figure out measurements to things you don't really know, this is a piece of aluminum TIG rod. So I slid all this, this whole thing, slid all this up into the truck, held it where I wanted it, and took my TIG rod and just bent it to where I wanted to land. And then I took this over to the protractor it's 18 degrees, so so when, you, when you're using something like this, I was cutting both ends of it to get it to fit. So I knew this was the distance I needed my bend to be up the metal, and then this is the, the, the running end on up to the, the uh, wheel tub. I don't know if you, that will help you or if you think it's the dumbest thing you've ever heard, but that is a really good way to find angles and links of pieces that you have no idea. I managed to wrestle the metal brake out of the corner and that was a feat in itself. Let's head over there. Okay, got the dusty old girl out. Go ahead and put dead center on her line. Another tool I use all the time, it was one of my favorite tools and this one's got a lot of miles on it, digital angle cube. So, the way these work is you set them down on any surface. It doesn't matter, you know, your shop's not level, your work table's not level. You don't have to jack with trying to get your work piece level. You just set this, whatever it is, zero it. Now it will operate off of this plane. Super simple, works really good. So we'll zero this and then we'll take it to 18. Sneaking up on it. What else we got there? 21. I say we try 19 and a half. I don't know if you can see, but we've got that panel we just bent. Laying in there, we've got some stuff kind of clamped into place. It's gonna fit okay. And then we just got to come back and make some templates and weld our sides in, which 
is a pretty big job, but it's not hard, just time consuming. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and graph those two pieces together so I can really start kind of tightening up my measurements. And I almost hate to let you guys watch this because I, I don't know that it's that impressive, but this is this is stick building parts with with minimal tools. good we added this second bend in and that makes up really nice with this going okay not sure what to do with these ears yet initially the ears were you know that they set in and this piece actually tipped out to come up and mate with the original well you can see here where the tires that it had on it, 275, 60, 15, so just fat enough that they were contacting this at different times, trying to avoid that because we're going to we're going to continue even further up into this wheel well if we do put it on bags or if anybody puts it on bags. So just trying to watch the uh, angle of the dangle. I've been in and out and under that bed for a couple hours now, and this is kind of what I've got. Like I was saying earlier, we threw a second bend in that panel up here. And then I was able to hand form this back panel. And we've got her fitting pretty good. So it's time to go ahead and start tacking this thing into place. We treated what was there as far as rust on the inside of that bedside. And then I don't know if it made any sense or not, but just as an extra precaution, I coated the inside of that with uh, some of this stuff, I've never used it before. It sprays like crap. So it's not the prettiest of finish, especially on this side. It was really just coming out in chunks, but it did build quickly and it's gonna be hidden. So we'll see how that does. Probably outlast us all. I don't know if you can see, but I went ahead and put the wheel tub back in the truck because I wanna weld a filler panel in there but there's a lot of room for movement and so I went ahead and assembled the bed you can see here anytime I move slightly it's going to change that I just wanted to make sure that we had everything bolted together and uh, we were pretty close before I finished that so that I didn't end up pulling stuff way out of square and mess up our body line down the truck so what I've done is bolted everything back together and <clears throat> we were not square the way it was wanting to sit. This bedside was tipped out. So what I did was just took a piece of scrap and pulled it over, used the digital angle finder there, took some measurements off the top of the square that I laid across the bed to get a, as accurate of representation as I could as to what flat was, then pull it over and I've got everything sitting there tacked. Everything's sitting at zero. We measured back across in the beginning stages. We took a measurement across the top inside 65 and an eighth and that's what we got back. So this is coming together. Now it's time to go ahead and finish up the interior bedside panels that I've been working on. So I got back under there and made some uh, tape templates. I've got them traced out here and hopefully when I get this cut out with a little bending and fan dangling this will fill up the first of the gaps we had left on the inside there. Got our filler piece made, pop some holes in it so we can spot weld it to the inside of the wheel lip. We'll slide under there and see if I can get this thing into position. Got the first one tacked into place and really, really firmed up you know our bedside. Of course my support's not on yet but we had lost all of that support Rather than lay on my back under this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and just tack everything into place good. I'll turn this bed over when I get to that point and I'll finish up a lot of this, put some seam sealer around some of these seams. 
I don't know that it's necessary to finish weld all of that, but definitely get a little bit more on it. Okay, I got the back side stitched into place here. Got a little cleanup I'm gonna do, trimming and, and shaping, but we'll do that when she's upside down and I can get at it better. So with the interior of our bedside reconstructed and the lip tacked back into place, there is no flimsiness whatsoever. And the reason I point this out is because the more I dug and looked at how people had done their own, a lot of them just removed that inside piece and it really didn't take much consideration on my part. I was like, there's, there's no way it, it would just flop, you know, especially if, I mean, let's say you put a wild cam in one. The thing's going to sit here and just, just look like a janky pop can. So that's the reason I've gone through all this extra work and maybe some of you out there know a better way I should have went about it. I openly invite that criticism and would just ask that you share it to help the people that, that might be looking into this. This is how I did it. It's really nice and firm. I've only got two tacks on it and I laid a level across the edge of my lip. One of my tacks pulled just a little bit, so I'll, I'll end up drilling that back out. When I get an extra set of hands, pull that out straight again to minimize the body work, but this is coming together, it's gonna to be good. Now that I finished up the other interior bedside, that's a pretty fair jumping off point for this video. You can see what you're gonna get into if you decide to raise the bed floor of your square body. You're just gonna need some extra hands and some tools and some, some spare time. It takes a little bit. As this one sits, still need to create, in my case, a seven inch filler panel across the bottom. We need to, once I pull it apart to finish up my work, I've got to trim out this rear cross member so that my tail light can go back into position. Also, in my case, I need to create some seven inch risers for my bed mounts. Now you can buy those. They're pretty expensive, look like about $400. There's really not much to it. I just need to create a seven inch uh, platform to set my bed on now that I've raised my floor. Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe to follow along on this square body build and uh, catch up with me on what I'm working on next. Thank you guys.